I'm going to show you how to do a painting in watercolour pencils of the Diablo and Orc moth. Now, normally I paint in pure watercolours, or sometimes I mix watercolour pencils with them, but with this one, to demonstrate the pencils, I'm going to use just the specific pencils themselves. We started off with um, a pencil drawing done with a graphite pencil. And then over the uh, graphite pencil, I then sprayed some um, perfect colourless fixative. This stops the watercolour paint from mixing with the with the graphite and getting all sort of muddy colours. So once you've fixed it with the um, with the coloured fixative, uh, you can then take a pen tail or artist pen, and then you can go round the pencil drawing, all the way around it, so it really brings the drawing forward and it prepares it already for the watercolour painting or the in our case the watercolour pencils. Now watercolour pencils uh, they've been out some years now and they're really coming to their own with artists because they're so convenient to use and you can take uh, this is a deluxe box I've got here actually I've had this many many years and the thing is you can take these uh, pencils out in the countryside and you can do some wonderful drawings and all you need is uh, basically some water and we use these refillable pens that uh, you put water in you squeeze them and the water comes out and it dissolves the colour so I'll just show you um, basically how this is done we take a pencil in this case we've got a blue pencil and we're going to do this as um, with a blue decking and possibly a metallic colour for the fuselage so you just take the pencil um, you can either sharpen them with a pencil sharpener or I prefer to actually sharpen them with a craft knife. And you take your pencil and then you just lay on the colour in the area that you want it. Don't be too um, frightened to put the colour on because once we put the water on we want plenty of depth of colour. So we just fill it in in the area. And this is quite a rough knot paper. It's really nice paper to use. And I've said before, the quality of the paper makes a big difference with watercolour paintings. You wouldn't expect to use ordinary exercise book paint, uh, paper on something like this. You, you wouldn't get the desired effect. So we've started with the, um, with the blue. And we'll just put a bit around the spinner there as well. And then we'll take the water in the pen. Just give it a little tiny squeeze. And then... Dab it even a second, got too much there. And then just take your brush and then just lay it across the colour. And the richness of the colour really comes forward. Now, once these are dry, you wouldn't know they were done with a, a watercolour pencil. It's all pure pigment, whether it's put into a pencil or whether it's put into a, a tube or whatever. It all comes from the same colour source. And these are really beautiful to use. You notice I'm just demonstrating around the nose here. Uh, you can even at this stage you can start tinting, you can start shading the colour as well. Okay. So we'll put that away for a moment and then but now we'll do um, a darker colour on the lower surface of the wing. So for this we'll start off with we've got sort of darkish green here. Yeah, this is a no, it's actually a blue grey, looks green to me, but and then we'll take it, because underneath the wing there's quite a shadow there. So once again, lay in the colour. Don't be afraid to really give it some welly. And once you get used to these, they're a, a beautiful pencil to use as well. You can actually get watercolour pencils, you can get um, watercolour pastel pencils as well. I've got a set of those, they're really nice. I'll demonstrate those one day as well. It's a different technique altogether, but for the purpose of this one, we'll do it in watercolour. And as I said before, watercolour is a beautiful medium, whichever way you do it, and you can get really intense colours with modern colours. You can get really intense colours. Now take your watercolour pen again, and just lay the colour on. And while you're doing this, you can actually start the shading process as well. Don't be frightened to experiment by moving the brush about a little bit, different angles as well, and different pressures. You'll soon get used to it. And then 
in the underside of the other wing. Now, once this is dry as well, we can, perhaps tomorrow when it's bone dry, uh, we can lay more colour over the top of this. A little squeeze there to get more water at the reservoir. We can go over this again and make the colour more intense. And we just keep building it up until we get to the stage where we get the satisfactory results with it. Now the watercolour, the watercolour pens we use, they're actually not watercolour, they, they are they are permanent pens, so you won't dissolve them by putting the water onto them. So there we've got the grey colour underneath the wings there. And just before we wrap up for the evening, we'll put another colour onto the wheels, onto the tyres of the wheels. And as I said before, you don't need black. Black creates a big hole, so all we need to do is use a similar, in this case it's actually a dark violet colour, so we can start off with a, a dark violet on the tyres, and this will form the basis for the effect of seeing rubber. If you look at rubber actually, it's got all sorts of colours in it, it's got greys in it, it's got whites in it as well, so there's no hard pass rule on that, you just got to try all the colours, it's what they call local colours, if the colour doesn't actually represent the true colour is what we call, we term it local colour. And then we'll apply the water again. And as you can see, you've got quite a bit of control. In fact, you've got more control over the watercolour pencils than you've actually over standard watercolour paint. So we'll leave it at that for now and get the idea. And tomorrow I'll do another little video uh, of the overlays on that particular model. So this is the Diabland Orc Moth. What a famous machine used in Canada and the Outback as well. And it's been one missing from my paintings for some time. So we'll leave that for tonight, allow it to dry out, and then tomorrow we'll do part two. Thank you.